at least Class A of the SO British Touring Car Championship. Andy Rouse and Rob Gravitt, keen rivals all season, clashed at Silverstone, with Rouse emerging as the front-running Class A winner. This was the kind of action we'd associated with touring car racing for the last couple of years. The contrast was the dogged manner that John Cleland picked his way to 11 class wins and the overall title for Vauxhall. But honours were going to be a lot tougher in 1990 with a radical change to the championship class structure. Class A would remain, but the rest of the field would go into the new two-litre formula. And for Cleland, that came in the form of an all-new Vauxhall Cavalier. The two-litre formula was designed to bring in a wider range of cars, like the Honda Civic for Ray Arms, and for Mark Hales, the Colts to Ryan. But it was still dominated by the BMWs, led by the 1988 champion Frank Sittner. He'd be partnered by members of the BMW junior team, selected in trials, the first qualifier, Kelvin Burt. The selection process was very tough. They initially wrote to 50 drivers and invited them to attend. I think there were about 20 on the day who finally turned up. Uh, they then whittled it down to 10 by a series of tests and finally the three which were chosen. And now here at Alton Park you're quicker than the main man aren't you? Well it's my favourite circuit so I would have hoped to have gone well round here. Kelvin Burt impudently qualifying ahead of Frank Sidner. Andy Rouse also qualified well but only after surveying the damage of a big accident in practice. I took to the grass at probably 125 miles an hour so I just banked and skipped across the field. Hit it quite hard actually the car went in on the uh, on the front right corner and then sort of flipped around and hit the wall, tire wall sideways and uh, rolled up onto its side. So when I came to rest I was lying on the side. And when practice for the opening round at Alton Park was over, Andy Rouse had planted that Sierra Cosworth on the front row, but he'd given second best to the pole position man Rob Gravitt. Second row, the two Labatt's cars, Lawrence Bristow just ahead of teammate Tim Harvey. Then on the third row, Kelvin Burt, a really outstanding qualifying performance to head the two-litre field. Mike Smith with Graham Good on row four, and the 1989 champion John Cleland alongside the 1988 champion Frank Sidner on row five. A slightly smaller, but certainly a competitive field, and commentator for the opening round of the SO British Touring Car Championship is Murray Walker. Excellent weather, gigantic crowd, 20 laps, 56 miles, a clutch start this year. Rob Gravitt in the white Sierra in pole position on the left, Andy Rouse on the right, and it's go. Great starts by Rob Gravitt and Sean Walker. And now we're in car with Marnie, his two-litre BMW, Graham Good on the left, Mike Newman comes through on the right, and Newman hits Good, who prepares his car. There's gratitude for you. Now, down to Cascades, Rob Gravitt is leading, Sean Walker's in second position, then it's Andy Rouse, Harvey and Bristow, and Mike Smith in the red and white Sierra. Now we're looking back from Gravitt's car in the lead, that's Sean Walker behind, Andy Rouse on the right, 560 horsepower, Rouse goes through up into second position. Now they're round Island Bend at 150 miles an hour, up to the Shell hairpin. Rob Gravitt leading, Rouse, Walker, Harvey, Bristow, Mike Smith. On to Forston Chicane, second gear, 60 miles an hour. Looking back at Andy Rouse in second position. Going up towards Druids. That's a third gear, right-hand corner at about 80 miles an hour. And as they go round Nickerbrook, Andy Rouse is challenging Rob Gravitt, coming up to Druids. And Rouse is going through. No, he's not. He dropped back a bit. Underneath the bridge at Nickerbrook. Now there are Druids. Gravitt, Rouse, Sean Walker, Harvey, Bristow in fifth position. And Rouse is attacking again, and this time he does go through. And Harvey goes past Walker, up into third position. Tim Harvey, number three, on the left. So it's Rouse, Gravitt, Harvey, Walker, Bristow. Rounding Lodge, up through to complete the lap. Rouse, Harvey, Harvey has gone past Rob Gravitt, up into second place. Rob Gravitt goes down to third position, it's Sean Walker fourth. Now we're looking back at Walker, Walker's Harry and Gravitt is going past. And Bristow goes through, up into fourth position. Rob Gravitt down to fifth place, this is Andy Rouse leading. The master leads. And now we're with John Cleland's Vauxhall Cavalier and he's not at all happy. He's been passed by Graham Good's Ford Sierra. Approaching Shell. 
Lawrence Bristow, number 10, coming up to take Walker, or is he for fourth position? Sean Walker keeps him back as they go up to Forston Chicane. They're both in Andy Rouse prepared, turbocharged Ford Sierra Cosmos. Two litres, 560 horsepower, they're leaving Rob Gravit well behind, approaching Nickerbrook, 150 miles an hour, up Clay Hill. There's Bristow chasing Sean Walker. Now up to Druids. Rouse locks up his left front. Round Druids. Bristow behind him. And you can see the gap between the first two and the second two. Now there's the leader, Andy Rouse, chased by Tim Harvey. Sean Walker in third position. Then Lawrence Bristow, number 10, trying to challenge on the outside. Walker keeps the line. Now this is Bristow's opportunity. They're coming through to complete the lap. Sean Walker, 21 years racing experience comes from Elstree, ex-Sports 2000 champion, and Lawrence Bristow, number 10, seven years racing experience, and into the pits comes Rob Gravitt. Don't know what the problem is. They're all looking very confused. Rob Gravitt waving away brake dust. What's the problem? He started missing on the warm-up lap, and it's cutting out completely, so I don't know what's happening. I think it might be plugged, I don't know. Well, it certainly looks like plugs, they're taking them out. And there's an ignition lead being changed as well. And meantime, Jerry Marnie is being passed by the Swedish woman driver, Netta Lindgren, both in BMW M3s. And approaching Druids, this is the battle for the lead. Andy Rouse really trying, locks up. Harvey behind him, third and fourth, Walker and Bristow. And Tim Harvey is really going for it now. He's just broken the lap record. One minute, 37.8, 101.9 miles an hour. That's number three, Tim Harvey in second place. But Andy Rouse still leads, leading out of Lodge, completing the lap in car with Tim Harvey. Rouse ahead, over the line at 130 miles an hour. Down through the gears to Old Hall, 60 miles an hour. Down at Cascades, Rouse and Harvey, first and second. Walker and Bristow, third and fourth. They are all in Sierras, but they're using two different makes of tyre, Dunlop and Pirelli. Into Cascades, and Bristow goes through, up into third place, 90 miles an hour, ahead of Sean Walker. And back at Druids, there's Kelvin Burt in the BMW, a superb seventh, leading the two-litre formula. In his first drive for the BMW junior team, ahead of... Frank Sidner and John Cleland there in the Vauxhall Cavalier. And that is the first race for the two-litre Cavalier. And he's third in class, John Cleland. There he is. Out of Cascades. Number three, Tim Harvey on Dunlop, still hanging on to the Pirelli shot. Number one, Andy Rouse in the ICS Sierra. There's Rouse leading. Tim Harvey, the sports car champion, we're with him now. And Andy Rouse's practice shunt has obviously failed to slow him or the car. Rouse leading, Harvey second, Bristow third, Walker fourth. Mike Newman is in fifth position, Mike Smith is in sixth place, Kelvin Burke leading the two litres is in seventh position. Riding with Tim Harvey, and look at Andy Rouse, there he is effortlessly leading, well not effortlessly, this must be a considerable effort for Andy. And only now is Rob Gravick getting out of the pits. New plugs, new plug lead, and he's well down. Old Hall, Andy Rouse, Tim Harvey, Hammer and Tongs for the lead. Kelvin Burt, number 56, BMW, now down to eighth, chasing Graham Good Sierra. And then there's a terrific scrap. That is Ray Bellum, number 51, the double world championship sports car driver, ahead of Ian Forrest's BMW. And ahead of them are Jerry Marnie and Letton Lindgren's BMWs. Down to Cascades, a superb drive by 22-year-old Kelvin Burt. He won his place in the three-man BMW junior team from over 70 applicants. He was by far the fastest two-litre car in practice, and now he's driving like a veteran to lead the two-litre formula. Losing 
very little ground to the vastly experienced Graham Good in his 560 horsepower Ford Sierra. And Bird's faster in the 2 litre, 260 horsepower ballasted and rev limited BMW than last year's 2.3 litre, 320 horsepower BMW. Druids, Rouse leading, Harvey second. And Tim, the double BRDC sports car champion who drives for the Spice team in sports car world championship races, beat Rouse and Macau, but it doesn't look as though he's going to beat him today. There goes Andy. And at the end of the lap, over the line, Rouse leads by 1.3 seconds. Lawrence Bristow, there he is, third in the second Labatt Sierra. Sean Walker in fourth position. Then the two leaders, Bellum and Forrest, and Forrest going through on the inside. Bellum, number 51, chops him off. Nick Whale just behind them. They're battling for fourth in class and twelfth overall, and Jerry Marney there is in trouble. Slowing down, Winker going, down to Cascades, Bellum, Forrest and Whale, absolutely together. Terrific scrap. Into the pits, Jerry Marney. Not at all a happy first race for him in the two-litre BMW. I can't see what the problem is. There's a lot of confusion. What is it? Stuck in third gear. What's that, man? Stuck in third gear. Never mind. That's it. Back in the race, second in the two-litre class, Frank Sittler, the 1988 champion. And on the dashboard, a special digital lap timer. But it's not recording times fast enough to catch Kelvin Burt. And there is Frank's target. 56, Kelvin Burt, some seven seconds ahead. And now the first race gremlins are appearing. Ray Arms out with his 1600cc Honda Civic. Rob Gravitt's teammate, Mike Smith, into the pits with the second track star Ford Sierra. And a bit of confusion. Move up, he moves up. And it's a tyre or a suspension problem. And Bristow has caught his teammate, Tim Harvey. He's closing and he goes through to second place. Lawrence Bristow, number 10, up into second place, ahead of Harvey and behind Andy Rouse. Port Sierra's first, second, third, and the rest in Class A. And Mike Smith gets out of the pits. A broken roll bar is the problem, and there's nothing you can do about that. Not in the race, anyway. And where's Sean Walker? Because that's Graham Good, up to fifth. Spitting flame and smoking. Well, over the line goes Good, but he's not looking at all healthy. And that's Walker, so now the order is Rouse, Bristow, Harvey, Mike Newman in fourth place, Good fifth, Bert in the leading two-litre car is sixth, and now Good's blown it, literally. So Kelvin Bert will soon be in fifth position in the BMW. And it looks like Graham Good's race is definitely finished, and in the Blue Sierra, Tim Harvey's got a problem too because Mike Smith, back in the race but well down, fairly flies past him out of Druids. And that's definitely the end of Graham Good's race. Something terminal and very expensive in the engine from the look of it. So, back to Leicester to fix it. And now Andy Rouse is well ahead, lapping the two litre men and pulling away from Bristow and Harvey who are slipping steadily back. That's Kelvin Burt, he is fifth overall now, and there is his teammate Frank Sittner, only just ahead of John Cleland's Vauxhall. In car with Sittner, out of Old Hall at 90 miles an hour, speed building down to Cascades. His ProDrive team have tweaked the BMW chassis over the winter, and it's going even better. Cascades, sixth place, 90 miles an hour, Burt ahead, up to Island Bend. And Kelvin Burt, there he is, leads the class on his way to Shell Hairpin. He's driving a fine, cool, first touring car race for BMW. But now all eyes are on black number five, Mike Newman's unsponsored Ford Sierra Turbo. He is right up with Tim Harvey. Third position, Harvey. And Mike Smith ahead of both of them. But don't forget he's been into the pits. And Newman's going through at Lodge. 
He's done it. He's up into third place ahead of Tim Harvey. And over the line they go. And in car with Harvey, he is powerless to stop Newman, who's driving for the first time in six months. And he wasn't even sure he was going to compete this year. And now Newman is going for second, catching Bristow as Harvey helplessly watches him disappear. Up to the shell hairpin. The island lake on the left. There is Bristow. That's Smith. There is Mike Newman and the gap is four seconds. And Newman is closing on Mike Smith as they come up to Forston Chicane. It's got Mad Mike on the screen, but this is calm and deliberate driving. Now, building up to 150 miles an hour and Nicker Brook. Mike Smith goes past Bristow. Lawrence has got something wrong, obviously. The gap between Bristow and Newman is down to two seconds. Up Clayhill, onto Druids. And Lawrence Bristow has almost had it because Mike Newman is gaining on him hand over fist. Out of Druids, down to Lodge. On the left, number 10, Bristow passes Mike Smith, who moves across and gets in the way of Mike Newman. So it's Bristow, Smith's not really in the running, Newman is coming up fast. Round three to complete a lap, out goes the ball, the blue flag is waving down to Old Hall Corner. There's Smith up with Bellum, and Mike Newman goes through up into second place, passing Lawrence Bristow. And that is the Blackburn Shoemaker's best yet. Now, downhill to Cascades amongst the two leaders. Forrest passes Bellum's Ford. So does Mike Smith. Now Mike Newman passes the Sierra. And Harvey. But it's going to be Andy Rouse's race. Calmly into Old Hall and on to complete the lap. He's now some 12 seconds ahead of Mike Newman. It's been an absolute copybook race by Andy Rouse. Perfect conditions and a perfect drive. There he goes, up to the shell hairpin, and Ulton expert Kelvin Burke keeps his two-litre lead. But Mike Smith's race is over. Out of the Sierra, not looking at all happy. And so's Nick Wales. Spins off onto the grass, but he'll probably regain and get going again. Lights ablaze, the incomparable 41-year-old Andy Rouse from Warwickshire once again stamps his authority on the British Touring Car Championship. Rouse Engineering prepared the Ford Sierra Cosworth Turbo. Andy drove it, and once again, it's victory for both. Mike Newman second, but here's Lawrence Bristow coasting and smoking in third on the last lap. Can he finish? Kelvin Burt can victory in the two-litre class with a new lap record. And Bristow just makes it third and straight off the course. What happened today was that the opposition all fell to bits. I mean, they, they've obviously had problems of some sort or other. I mean, they're all on the pace, so they're all a worry. Today we were lucky. Yesterday we were unlucky. Andy Rouse gets off to a confident winning start in the championship, and he hasn't done that for a couple of seasons. Mike Newman second. Lawrence Bristow limping in about a car's length ahead of Tim Harvey. Performance of the race, though, that debut two-litre Formula win of Kelvin Burt, ahead of his team leader, Frank Zittner. I went as quickly as I could in the first few laps. I, was, I could have kept up with um, two of those Sierras, in fact, but uh, I thought it wasn't worth it because they might not like that and they might get a bit rough. So I let them go and then just ease that off. Now, as part of the junior team, you've only got a handful of races during the course of the season. What happens if you keep winning like this? <laughs> I don't know. You'd better go and ask BMW. I don't know. I'll keep trying to win like this anyway. There have been times when teammates like Mike Smith and James Weaver have felt the intensity of Frank Sittner's rivalry. There's a whole new atmosphere in the BMW ranks these days, though. You handled the, uh, you handled the Sierras very well as they yeah. came through. Yeah, they were uh, better than the Quickness, where you got the great right Really? Yeah. Well, I, I just got blocked by one. It lost me about three seconds, and then you uh, couldn't even see your brake lights. Sitna against the BMW junior team could yet be the story of the championship, but it's round.